good morning all of you today we are going to discuss the damped oscillations and forced oscillations and resonance condition okay so are you able to see the board damped oscillations okay damped oscillations heading right now you can see in regularly you can take a simple pendulum suppose for example you can take a simple pendulum if you can move aside and release so it will start oscillating like this to and fro but it will continue to oscillate for infinite time or it will be stopped normally if you keep outside in a medium of air what happen what you can expect due to medium medium offering certain resistance resistance force as or no the medium is offering certain resistance force against the moment of this pendulum or against the moment of simple harmonic oscillator then this resistance force what happen because of this resistance it opposes the motion it opposes the simple harmonic motion so gradually the amplitude will be suppose initially this is the maximum displacement it may go after certain amount of time it will come to this point like this and finally it will come to stop so that means uh, gradually the amplitude will be decreases by the time elapsing yes or no so because of that what happen the amplitude will be slowly decreasing and finally the oscillations will be die that means it will be stopped such oscillations is called damped oscillations such oscillations is called damped oscillations what is damped oscillations i'll tell you in a single line when you make oscillations normally it will oscillate to and fro but in the air medium if you can see which offer some resistance in which the energy of the pendulum gradually decreases or oscillator gradually decreases and amplitude also gradually decreases finally the oscillations are stopped such oscillations we can call it as the damped oscillations so normally displacement of the simple harmonic oscillator or a particle which is getting shm we have given previously with respect to time how it is given i remember the displacement x is like this x is equal to a sin omega t given na equation x is equal to a sin omega t yes or no so it is a sinusoidal function then it will go like this so here we are maintaining the maximum displacement is the amplitude both positive and negative side so that is not decreasing here yes or no but in damped oscillations what you can observe the difference is that the displacement x with respect to time you can see initially it has a maximum amplitude no doubt at the starting time like this okay up to first oscillation second oscillation but after slowly you can see it will make the time period same but uh, amplitude will be reducing like this are you observe this one second graph displacement versus time of the oscillations so you can see uh, the amplitude is reducing finally if you go for the amount of time finally it will become zero amplitude are you observe this the second graph yes or no please react right yes sir so because of the air resistance offering a damping force air resistance offering damping force so damping force means it is something like a, you can see uh, if a ball is uh, falling down in a medium in fluids we have discussed there is opposition force offered by the air resistance that is also damping okay similarly here a pendulum is oscillating in air medium so air medium air resistance itself a damping force are you clear this point 
So sto <coughs> Stokes law we discuss damping force. So like that here damping force how to define we need to understand. Are you clear this point? How the damped oscillations will comes into picture? Because of the air resistance, the amplitude of the oscillations gradually decreasing, and finally the amplitude will become zero. The oscillations will be stopped. Such oscillations are called damped simple harmonic oscillations, or simply damped oscillations. Are you clear this point? Right. Now, how the damping force depends? So normally, damping force directly proportional to velocity. Suppose F damping, F D, proportional to velocity of the oscillating particle. If the velocity more, damping force will be more. How to understand this? For suppose the car is moving very fastly, then air resistance you can observe very high. If the car is moving very slow, air resistance will be very low value. You observe this one. So like that, uh, damping force is directly proportional to velocity, and we can say negative of velocity, opposite to velocity direction. Then F damping, you can write uh, some minus B V. Some B is the damping constant here, proportional to constant. That is the damping constant. Are you clear this? So this is about understanding about damping force. F damping is directly proportional to negative of velocity. That means velocity of the particle is more, damping force is more. Velocity is low, damping force is low. Then F damping, F damping is equal to minus B V. Are you clear this? Then now, how the restoring force equation you can write? Uh, normally, before restoring force, F R is equal to minus K X. For S H M, yes or no? F restoring F restoring is equal to minus K X. Yes. Sir. Now. We can add re restoring force uh, to damping also. Then F R is equal to minus K X minus of B V. Then you can write F R is equal to minus common K X plus B V minus of K X plus B V. Where K is you know already force constant or B is now damping constant. Two constants we are adding. Okay. So this is about the. <coughs> The total restoring force on the particle in real-time oscillations. In a real-time oscillations, then you can add F R is equal to M A by using second law. By using Newton's second law, this is equal to product of mass and acceleration of the particle is getting a such a. Then you can write restoring force is equal to M A. Then you can write M A is equal to minus K X. Plus B V minus half. Then you can write this equation as M A plus K X plus B V. So this is the equation, differential equation of S H M damping oscillations S H M. Because how to write differential equation? We know here if X is the displacement, then V is equal to d x by d t. Then A A is acceleration. A is equal to You can write as a d square x by d t square with respect to time. Then you can write m into d square x by m into d square x by d t square plus. You can write b b b first b into d x by d t because additionally no problem plus k x. Equal to zero. Are you clear this equation? This is called uh, differential yes, differential equation for damped oscillations. Differential equation equation for damped oscillations. Right. So normal oscillations. What is the differential equation? This is uh, b into dx by dt can remove. So that is you can write like uh, m into d square x by d t square plus k x is equal to zero. This is the normal simple harmonic equation without damping. Now with the damping, this is the equation. Okay, that is the difference you have to remember. So this you can write like this also d square x by d t square plus b by m into d x by d t plus k by m into x is equal to zero. This is like a uh, 
Yeah, we can divide both sides. D square x by dt square plus b by m dx by dt. Plus b by m dx by dt plus k by m x is equal to zero. Now this for this differential equation, you can write the solution. Solution will give the displacement equation. What is the solution? Solution is uh, x is a function of time. That is the displacement. That x t is equal to. Let us say amplitude a. E, a into e power minus b t by two m. Amplitude a into e power minus b t by two m. Into cos omega dash cos omega dash t. Normally, you can write cos omega t now omega dash t plus pi. You can write sine r cos. You know the difference also. And you can write sine starts from mean position. If you can write if you can write cos function, it starts from extreme position. So now, normally, you can write oh, displacement equation x is equal to a x sine omega t plus pi or cos omega t plus pi. But here, I written x is a function of time. A x of t is equal to a into b power omega t. A into e power exponential b t by two m into cos omega dash t plus pi. Here we need to understand two things. Here we know already amplitude. E power minus b t by two m. What is this? This e power minus b t by two m will make the damping of the displacement value because it is not simply cos function or sine function. You can see here. This is decreasing amplitude now. So that e power minus b t by two m is there, na? This term will make this damping, the displacement. Okay, right. What about this omega dash? Normally, you can write omega is the angular frequency or angular speed, but here omega dash means uh, this frequency also slightly changes because of damping. So that omega dash we can write now. Omega dash is equal to normally root of k by m. Now you can write root of k by m minus B by two m, damping com component also comes into picture. Minus B by two m whole square. Okay, so these uh, derivations and all no need. Uh, just directly you should take. Okay, so one thing is that differential equation for damped oscillation. Second thing is that displacement x of t as a into e power minus b t by two m cos omega dash t plus phi. Okay, here e power minus b t by two m is the Damping component. The angular frequency, the angular speed omega dash will become normally root k by m. Now it will become root k by m minus b by two m whole square. Are you clear this up to? Yes. Yeah. Right. Now normally energy of the simple harmonic oscillator. What is the value total energy? E is equal to half m omega square. Do you remember anybody? A square. This is the normally total energy half m omega square a square. So this is also right half k a square. K is the force constant. But now in the case of damping, how this energy changes means E of t function of time because energy also decreasing, decreasing finally becomes zero now. The oscillator stopped. Then I can write half k a square. Into e power minus b t by two m whole square, but b t by two m whole square will become b t by m. Okay, this is the energy value. You can remember e of t as a function of time of k square into e power minus b t by m. This is energy of the damping oscillator. Are you clear this? Yes or no? So this is about the damped oscillations. So after this, so suppose if you want to continue the oscillation without damping, even though in a real time situation, what you need to do? We need to do apply a continuous force that is called periodic force. You need to apply periodic force. Suppose you can take a, a electric bell in the school. Nowadays we are not going to school. Also, you can observe electric bell continuously hitting the bell. 
so that continuously it will ring up to you can switch off yes or no so in the case of electric bell yes. what you are giving there is a force periodic force there is a periodic force that periodic force makes the bell continuously hitting and ringing so such a force you can call as a periodic force so that means a force with some period it is acting on a body such type of force you can call it as a periodic force then what is the purpose of this periodic force so let us define this periodic force so ft is equal to as a function of time f not into some cos omega d into t cos omega d into t it is something like uh, omega d is the new frequency okay so what is the difference here first we have normal oscillations so that is uh, we can say free oscillations also free oscillations so that means if we can give a, a particle some external force so after that continuously oscillating to and fro that is a free oscillation or you can take a simple pendulum without damping it is continuously oscillating to and fro that is also free oscillations so that means uh, if an oscillation if a particle oscillating with its natural frequency or natural angular speed natural angular frequency omega if a oscillation if a particle is oscillating with its natural frequency omega then those oscillations are called free oscillations the oscillations are called free oscillations are you clear this what is meant by free oscillations first if a particle or if a spring or a pendulum is oscillating with its natural frequency then such oscillations are called free oscillations okay but uh, because of damping what happening because of damping these free oscillations are dying off okay these free oscillations are stopped so that is dying off free oscillations are it is stopped so to continue the free oscillations or to continue the oscillations so what we need to do we need to apply some periodic force continuously so that uh, the oscillations will become forced oscillations the oscillations will become forced oscillations are you clear now what is the purpose of periodic force and why we need to take the forced oscillations in terms of electrical force or in terms of uh, mechanical force so in the case of forced oscillations then there is a periodic force that will continuously give initial bump for the oscillator that will give periodically so that uh, oscillations will not become die off oscillations will not become die off are you clear this point so the oscillations under periodic force the oscillations under periodic force we can call it as the forced oscillations okay that means if the oscillations are executing under periodic force with the external frequency omega d external frequency omega d then such oscillations is called omega normally damping that means how much amount of damping is happening that amount of force is giving okay so with the frequency of omega d then that such oscillations are called forced oscillations are you clear what is free oscillation what is periodic force what is forced oscillation yes or no yes sir now we can define this uh, already a given external force ft function of time is f not into some cos omega d into t then this force you can apply for natural oscillations so even you can see the swing also for a baby boy you can use a swing na so that swing uh, is oscillating to and fro but uh, eventually it will be stopped eventually it will be stopped to continue the swing what we need to do we need to push continuously periodically we need to push then only the swing used to oscillate continuously this is also simple example to understood uh, forced oscillation okay so we know already restoring force fr is equal to what is the value remember minus of ax plus bv including damping 
okay fr is equal to minus kx plus bv now additionally what we need to add here normally fr plus kx plus bv is equal to zero before okay it is the damping condition now instead of zero we need to put ft post translation okay that is fr plus kx plus bv is equal to f ft that is f naught cos omega dt are you clear this so this is equal to the periodic force f naught cos omega dt now you can add differential equation for this you know fr is equal to ma equal to ma plus kx plus bv is equal to f naught cos omega dt that is again m into d square x by dt square plus uh, b into dx by dt plus kx is equal to f naught cos omega dt okay now this is the differential equation for force translations then you can write in a required form b by m you can divide with m into dx by dt plus k by m into x is equal to f naught by m into cos omega d t is the differential equation for force translations differential equation for force translation okay so simply you can add f naught cos omega d term so in this case what is the displacement equation xt and the amplitude value then this displacement equation x as a function of time you can write for this oscillations a cos omega dt plus phi instead of omega you can write directly omega dt why because this is a a cos omega t omega dt this is continuously acting by driving force only that means uh, these oscillations frequency will be driving force frequency that means frequency of frequency of force oscillations is equal to driving force frequency that means external force frequency external force frequency that is also called driving force driving driving force so omega d omega driving okay not damped sorry this omega driving omega d omega driving force okay so with the driving force frequency it will oscillate so that is the displacement equation you have to remember this for this derivations and all mathematical is there but no need at this level next what is this amplitude here this amplitude equation also very large equation amplitude a is equal to amplitude depends on f not no f not by root of m square into omega square minus omega driving square omega square minus omega driving square whole square plus omega d square b square so this is the amplitude equation f not by root of m square into omega square minus omega d square whole square plus omega d into b whole square where b is the damping constant so this amplitude will be two cases will come here case one if damping is small if damping is small that means for small oscillations damping will be small for small oscillations okay so in that case so this term will become zero b will be zero no then this equation will become a equal to f not by root of m square into omega square minus omega d square whole square then this will become f not by root of m square is m into omega square minus omega d square are you clear this this amplitude changes if the damping is small and the damping constant is zero in that case this term will become zero then amplitude of oscillation will become f not by 
m into omega square minus omega d square. Second case, suppose if uh, natural frequency is equal to driving force frequency, omega is equal to omega d. That is if uh, natural frequency, that means the driving force frequency equal to natural frequency. That is the point you have to understand. If a driving force frequency is equal to driving force frequency, natural frequency of the object, natural frequency. In such a case, you can say this term will become zero. First term, omega is equal to omega d. Na, this first term will become zero. Then amplitude you can see here, a is equal to f naught by root of omega d b whole omega. <laughs> omega d whole square into b square then that will become that will become f naught by omega d into b f naught by omega d into b okay so in such a case what happen this amplitude is increasing you can observe here this amplitude value this reciprocal value is less then this amplitude will be increasing so that means uh, if uh, external freak force frequency is equal to natural frequency of the object, then the oscillations uh, will be oscillating with increasing amplitude. The oscillations will oscillate with increasing amplitude. Such a condition is called a resonance condition. This condition is called a resonance condition. Try to understand what is resonance condition, what is resonance also they will ask. The resonance means if external force frequency is equal to natural frequency of a body which is oscillating or an object which is oscillating, then the oscillations uh, will oscillate with increasing amplitude. Such oscillations is called oscillations under resonance. Okay. Simply, what is resonance means? Resonance is the condition at which if for an oscillator or a for an oscillating particle, if external driving force frequency is equal to natural frequency, then the object will oscillate with increasing amplitude. Such condition is called a resonance condition. Okay, where we can see this type of resonance condition? Normally, if we say eighth class also, the period of uh, the soldiers will, will be stopped uh, while crossing the bridge. Okay, why because if the soldier's period is equal to natural frequency of the bridge, then the bridge will collapse. Okay, so like that, that is the example for resonance condition. So that means if the external periodic force frequency is equal to natural frequency of any object, it will oscillate with the maximum amplitude. That is the resonance condition. Okay, so this is, a, this is about understanding about uh, forced oscillations forced oscillations under resonance condition okay so here in the displacement equation one term we missed xt is equal to a cos omega dt into actually this phi dash not phi phase also will not be same then what is this phi dash means uh, this uh, tan phi dash you can write as tan phi dash is equal to minus v naught by this means minus v naught by omega d into x naught. Velocity this is the displacement. Minus v naught by omega d into x naught. This in terms of velocity and the displacement you can write. This is a phi dash value. So here main important points this amplitude of force oscillations and the phase value. And in the two conditions small oscillations okay in that case uh, the amplitude you can write f naught by m into omega square minus omega d square next uh, oscillations with the uh, resonance condition if the damping frequency is equal to sorry driving force frequency is equal to driving force frequency equal to natural frequency then the amplitude will become maximum that is f naught by omega d into b so such condition is called a resonance condition in this case uh, the oscillations uh, will be oscillated with the maximum amplitude. Okay. Are you clear up to this? Yes, sir. So, as of now, we discussed about what are damped oscillations and then what are free oscillations and what are forced oscillations. 
okay and their amplitude and the differential equation values suppose for resonance condition i'll give you example already i said the bridge case and a, a simple example also i'll give for resonance resonance condition suppose you can take uh, four pendulums this you can see nc dip because there this one pendulum 1 pendulum 2 with a different lens you can observe here pendulum 3 and pendulum 4 so pendulum 1 2 simple pendulum 3 4 this is the fixed support so what is the difference you can observe what is the similarity and difference pendulum 1 and 3 having same length pendulum 1 and 3 have taken same length 2 and 4 different length and uh, those are not matched with 1 and 3 also so it will give the some external force so that it will start oscillating because of the force so it will start oscillating 2 and 4 all the pendulums but you can observe at certain instant except 2 and 4 1 and 3 will oscillate with the maximum amplitude 1 and 3 oscillate with the maximum amplitude what is the reason here means uh, 1 and 3 having the uh, same length and the same mass you can consider mass also same the time period of this pendulum t equal to 2 pi root equal to 2 pi root l by z no mm. t, 2 pi root l by z so g anyway constant for all then l i have taken l is same for 1 and 3 so that means uh, for 1 and 3 will oscillate same time period that means same frequency omega f that means same omega if same time period same frequency linear frequency and same angular frequency omega then what i said if the frequencies will be same frequency of oscillations then they comes into resonance condition they comes into resonance condition okay so the, therefore one and three comes into resonance condition so that after certain interval of time you can observe one and three will oscillate with the maximum amplitude one and three will oscillate with the maximum amplitude are you clear this point yes sir right this is about a simple you can do this this at your home also this experiment okay you can take a thread and a small balls iron balls okay but uh, two two balls will should have the same length of the thread remaining will be different length so that you can try to oscillate so that uh, those uh, uh, pendulums with the balls with the same length of thread will oscillate with the maximum amplitude that you can observe okay yes, sir. right so this is about understanding about resonance what is the resonance means if the external periodic force frequency is equal to natural frequency of oscillating body then it then it will oscillate with the maximum amplitude okay such a phenomenon you can call it as the resonance okay right so that's all about uh, this oscillation chapter if anything in problems later we'll discuss so by today i'll closing this chapter tomorrow i can start uh, waves okay See right so thank you ananda have a nice day thank you sir